If you want to send a transaction on a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain, you need to use a JavaScript library like Web3. You can use Web3 on the backend or on the frontend. However, the way you use Web3 on the backend and on the frontend is a bit different. On the frontend, you have access to wallets such as MetaMask, but on the backend, that's not the case. Also, on the backend, usually you connect directly to services like Infura who require to be sent transactions that are already sent. But you don't have any wallet to do this. You have to sign this transaction yourself. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can send transactions to Ethereum smart contract on the backend by using Web3 and Node.js. I'm going to show you three methods starting from a more difficult method where we're going to see all the low level details of creating a transaction and after i'm going to show you some other methods that are a little bit easier that are a little bit higher level and that allow you to go a little bit faster if you don't know me i'm julian and on my channel i teach blockchain development and before we continue make sure to register for my free training on how to become a professional blockchain developer and find your first blockchain job, link just below. So first we are going to send a transaction with Web3 and Node.js by using a hard method. And the reason we do this is to understand well what's happening behind the hood. So for my demonstration, I've set up a simple truffle project and i have a very simple spot contract in the contracts folder and we're going to write our code in script.js and if you want to have access to the finished code you can check the link in the description so let's see a little bit what we have in our spot contract so that's a super simple spot contract where you have an integer variable and a setter function so because here I have the public keyword, that means I also have a getter so I can read the value of data and I can modify the value of data. Super simple. And after in script.js, so that's where we are going to write our code. So first we require Web3, that's the library we're going to use to set a transaction. Then we import the contract artifact of truffle. So this is a JSON document with a couple of info about the contract, such as the ABI and the address. This is produced when you compile the smart contract or when you deploy it to the blockchain. Then here I have my sending address as well as the private key. So I generated this address and private key by using this website Vanity ETH. So you scroll down you click on generate click to reveal and you can create as many address and private key as you want and so we're going to send our transaction on the Rinkeby public testnet and so in order to get some testnet ether then what you need to do is you can use this faucet but for that you need to first you need on your social media so it can be twitter facebook you can you create a post with the address that you just created and then you copy paste the link of this post you put it here you click on give me ether and it's going to give you some test ether so that's how i set up my address and my test net ether and after that i also here set up my infra url so infra is a service to easily access the Ethereum network. You don't strictly need to use Infura if you want to send a transaction to Ethereum, but it's very complicated to run an Ethereum node. So with Infura, they run Ethereum node for you and you create a free account and you can access a URL that you can use to connect to the blockchain. So inside my dashboard, I go to Ethereum, I created a new project and after you go to settings and you get a couple of endpoints so i chose the one from for rinkeby and i copy pasted this in my code and so after we're going to put all our deployment logic inside this function init one 
Oh, by the way, I realized that I didn't install Web3. <laughs> Let me fix this. So first I init an npm project and after I install Web3. Okay, so back to our code. So we are going to create a Web3 instance. So here you know that the way I import Web3 is with uppercase W, but here when I create the instance is with a lowercase W, that's super important. We pass the infra URL to Web3. And after second, we need to create a Web3 contract instance. So that's a JavaScript object that can communicate with our smart contract. So for that, first we need to know the network ID. So that's an integer that represents the Ethereum network we want to send a transaction to. So for that, we're going to use a function of Web3, web3.eth.net.getID. And after that, we're going to create our contract instance with new web 3eth.contract with an uppercase. We pass the ABI and the address of our contract. So for that, we use the my contract object we imported above, and this is gonna be in dot ABI. And for the address, this is gonna be my contract dot address. What am I saying? No, 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 this is wrong. This is in networks. And after network ID and dot address. Okay, so after we're gonna create a transaction object with our contract instance. So my contract dot method dot set data, and we're gonna put one as argument. So if you are used to integrating Web3 with MetaMask, you probably know that at this stage we do we use the send method here, but actually in this case, this is not an error. We're not going to use the send. This is gonna be a little bit different. So with this transaction object, we're going to estimate the gas. Just to be clear, I'm talking about the gas limit here. Uh, transaction estimate gas, and we're gonna pass for an object with the from parameter for the sending address. So that's gonna be address. This is the address that we defined before and that we used to get some uh, ring B uh, ether. And we're also gonna get the current gas price. This time with web 3eth get gas price. And after that, we're gonna get the encoded ABI of our function call. So that's a hexadecimal string that basically will tell our spot contract which function we want to call and with which argument. So for that, we use the encode ABI function. And after we need the nonce, so the nonce is an integer that is incremented after each transaction. And this is used to avoid to send twice the same transaction. So we're gonna use web 3eth transaction count and we pass the address that we want, okay. So after we need to sign our transaction. So this is gonna be an async operation, web 3eth.account sign transaction. And here we're gonna pass the detail of our transaction. First, the recipient, so that's going to be the spot contract, my contract dot option dot address, then data. Well, we already defined data here the gas, gas price, nonce. Uh, if you are not super experienced in JavaScript, basically, this notation here this is equivalent to this, this, etc. That's a shorthand notation. And we need to specify the chain ID to know on which blockchain network we want to 
deploy and you don't actually need to specify all of these parameters some of them have some default but i just wanted to show you under the hood how it works you can also specify a value parameter if you want to send some ether here and and this will be in the way so here is not 100 ether but this is 100 way if you want 100 ether this is going to be 10 uh, 100 times 10 power 18 uh, okay and after that we need to pass the private key so that web3 knows how to sign this transaction okay and after we are going to console log the old value of data in our spot contract so that we can compare before and after old data value and we're gonna call the data method so my contract dot method dot data dot call close this and after we're gonna finally send our transaction and we're gonna get a receipt so for that we use web 3 .eth send transaction and we pass sign transaction dot row transaction so that's going to be what they call a rlp encoded string so that's a special format for ethereum that is used for signed transaction and after we console log the transaction hash so that we can look it up on a blockchain explorer so for Rinkeby, you can go to rinkeby.etherscan.com for mainnet this is just etherscan.com and here this is going to be receipt.transaction hash and then we print the new value okay so now we can test our script so first we need to deploy our smart contract so here in the truffle configuration i've already prepared something so here we use another package called truffle wallet provider i pasted my address and private key we build this provider object and here in the networks part we define a new network ring b we pass the provider we just created network id is four for ring b but for mainnet this is one for each testnet this is different uh, by the way i need to install this truffle wallet provider uh okay so 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 npm install truffle hd wallet provider all right and so now we'll be able to deploy our smart contract so truffle migrate network ring b and i specify reset here all right and now we can run our script oh damn there is an error okay so let me see what's the problem okay so this is not send transaction but this is send sign transaction okay so let's try again and yes this is working so we can see the old value is zero then our transaction hash we can look it up on ether scan and after new data value so everything is working perfectly so let's just have a quick look for this transaction hash so here I am at rinkeby.etherscan.io. I paste my transaction hash. Uh, yeah, I can see that it happened 43 seconds ago. And from the address I created to the spot contract I deployed. This is working great. So it was a little bit cumbersome to sign the transaction and send it after. Can we send a transaction with a more simple way? Yes, we can. So we're gonna be back in our code editor and now we're gonna create 
another function that's going to be very similar to this one. So I'm going to copy paste init1 into init2. It first we are going to add our private key to the wallet of web3 with web3 dot if dot accounts dot wallet well wow, it's a lot of nesting level dot add and here we pass the private key so that's an internal in memory wallet of web3 that we're going to be able to use after so we're not going to use the sign transaction method here but we still need to define an object we're going to call this transaction data and this time we need a from parameter so that's our address and this time we don't have a chain id parameter but just chain and this is a string this time so specify ring b by default this is mainnet and we also need to specify the hard fork so the latest one is istanbul uh, if you want to target mainnet actually you can ignore these two parameters and by default it will be the correct one for mainnet and after we're going to use the method send transaction and we pass the transaction data and here since send transaction we'll see that for the from field we have an address of the wallet then send transaction will sign the transaction locally and send it to infura it's very important that we add the private key to the wallet of web3 because otherwise send transaction will not know how to sign this transaction and it's not going to work okay so here we're going to execute init2 this time oh by the way i forgot something so this time we're going to set data to 2 so we can make the difference with the previous step and we're going to run the script again and so this time the data value should go from 1 to 2 old data value transaction hash and a new data value 2 yeah that's great okay so we've made some progress now we can send a transaction with web3 and node.js with a more simple method but still i finding a little bit cumbersome and this is still quite different from what we do in the front end so can we make it even more simple? Yes, we can. So the third method I'm going to show you is actually very similar to what we do in the front end. So if you send transaction in the front end before, it's going to feel very familiar. So first of all, we're going to copy init2 because we still have a lot of common code. So this is going to be init3, all right. And at the top of the file, we will need to import HD wallet provider of truffle. Truffle HD wallet provider. Okay. And we scroll down. This time, no need to add the private key, but we're going to instantiate Web3 in a different way. So first, we instantiate a new provider with a private key so there are different ways to pass this first parameter if you have a single private key you can do it that way if you have several you can use uh, an array if you have a mnemonic phrase you can put the mnemonic phrase here and after we're going to put the infra url and this thing provider when combined with web3 it will allow us to sign our transaction really easily so here instead of infra url we are going to use this provider so provider are always something a little bit difficult to uh, beginner in blockchain so basically when you instantiate web3 with a provider object like this 
the Web3 object that you, you get in return is a sort of modified Web3 object because the provider object is going to intercept some method call of Web3. And so, for example, for the send method call, it's going to inter intercept this and sign the transaction before sending them. But everything is done transparently. It's also going to set different parameter like gas, gas price, etc. So actually, we don't have to do any of this. This is much more simple. All we have to do is we use my contract dot method dot set data so here we're going to put three dot send it here from our address and the provider is going to intercept this method call and sign it with the private key that we have here so that's super convenient so here we change init3, init2 to init3, okay, and we go back to our terminal, we execute the script, and everything is working fine. We can see the old value, the transaction hash, and the new value. Great. So now you not only understand how things work under the hood to send a transaction with Web3 and Node.js, but you also know an easy method that you can use if you want to go faster. So sending transaction from the backend with Web3 and Node.js, that's something important. But actually, in most cases, you probably want to use Web3 in the front end of your decentralized application. And for this, you need to integrate it with wallets like MetaMask. And it also comes with its own set of challenges. So if you want to learn how you can integrate Web3 with MetaMask, check out this video. I'll see you there.